So we hello everyone that is joining us. Hello, hello, and welcome to the November edition of our traditional webinar, Ask Julie Anything. I am Mariana Nadai, Marketing and Events Coordinator at Adorbis, and I will be your host today. And during this session, our founder and formulator, Julianne Lee, will be answering all your questions about the nutrition, health, and wellness of your adored beasts. So get ready, don't be shy, and ask Julie anything. But before we start, I want to ask for you all to switch your chats to everyone so that we can all join in on the conversation. And please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom screen to ask your questions. We will do our best to get through all of them. I also want to remind you that this session provides a judgment-free space with only the health and happiness of our animals and the planet being our core goal. So without further ado, I want to call Julie and Lee. <laughs> Hi, Julie. I just saw someone there from Stouffville, Susie Joyce. Wow. What? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's where I grew up. Was oh, in really? Stowe. Yeah. Crazy, eh? Yeah. Amazing. Nice. So, hi, everybody. Um, I'm just going to move this up here. We already have some questions. We have, yes. I can start asking them. So, Christina Higgs, any recommendations for balancing hormones? My JRT 10 years gets extremely hormonal uh, hormonal while in heat, constant tail flagging and unusually crazy behavior. And I am looking for ways to help her body balance itself. I have been cycling her through the protocols as her body leads me. So she has been getting basically everything, uh, ABA plus some um, CBD. Love you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Christina. So clearly, if she's in heat, she's not spayed, right? And um, uh, so, you know, I don't, I wish, can we get some, if I ask her questions, can we get them, can we get them on the chat? Can she answer them on the chat? Yes. Would be, would, would be good. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Um, so she's clearly not spayed and is this been her normal heat cycle meaning like she's 10 years old has she been doing this since she was six months old because that's that's something um that's really important to find out whether this is a new thing um or or it's something um that she's just starting so correct and she's always been this way this because I was going to say that's, that's a, those are pretty normal behaviors for, for female dogs in heat that aren't being bred. So what the, the problem happens is that if, if they're being, if they, once they get bred, then they just chill out, right? Then they're like, they go from crazy flagging tail, running around, looking, you know, like she just, you know, can't contain herself sometimes even like small peeing around the house it can be pretty quite quite intense then as soon as they get bred they're they're back to normal so for animals that are going through heat cycles even boys they don't actually males they don't actually go into heat but they definitely have a cycle and especially if they can smell a female in heat from like miles around my, my dog goes through it when the coyotes are in heat. So, um, trying to, trying to, uh, uh, regulate that is difficult. Cause I think it's pretty normal saying that oh, major gut issues all her life. That is just now getting better. This is past year being on ABA. She has chilled a bit during the heat's since her gut's improving. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense that she, the more her gut improves, the more the hormones will ba balance out. But if she's been like that ever since she's been a puppy and it's helping the, the gut health is helping now, then, you know, that would sort of say to me that, that 
she's had some, you know, issues with her gut health ever since she was a baby. But there are there are ways to make them less. I want to use, I'm going to I'm actually going to use the word not hormonal, but sexually frustrated, because I do think that that's I do think that that's the thing. I think that male and female of anything, dogs, cats that aren't being bred, that we've, if we've chosen to leave them intact because we believe it's healthier. I do think that she is um, unbelievably probably frustrated. She's probably wanting to have puppies, not understanding why she can't. Um, Sometimes females that aren't bread will go through something called a false pregnancy so a little while after her heat stops she'll start to like they'll start to like collect their toys and make nests as if they're going to have a baby because they actually go through a false pregnancy sometimes they can get something called um pyometra because um they can get an infection in their uterus because the 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 uterus thinks it's pregnant and then it starts to wall off the uterus to protect the eggs, which is natural when they are pregnant. But when they're not pregnant, what it does is it just contains bacteria and they can get really sick. So to try and help her deal with the frustration parts, you can use our go-to. CBD is really, really good. Um, things like... Uh, um, you know, exercising her more, um, using, you know, some, some herbs are, are good for, for, you know, menstrual hormonal issues, but I wouldn't be doing a lot with her when she's, when she is, when she's like that, other than trying to get, oh, I know which, which one would be really good is actually Ignasia. So, um, It's a homeopathic remedy spelled I-Ignatia, I-G-N-A-T-I-A. And it is for sexual frustration. That that might be a good one. If you could get a 200C and just give it to her once a day for three days, that might be that might be a really good suggestion too, in order to just take the edge off of her and like you're already doing with CBD. But I wouldn't get too worried about that because I think it's pretty normal thanks julie susie has a question hi julie what do you recommend for a mast cell tumor in the neck of a five six year old dog beyond histaminium histaminium and sorry (laughs) and constitutional remedy Hmm. definitely definitely liver support is a is a big one um the liver uh sort of regulates the histamine reaction so that would be something that i would be really really focusing on obviously things like gut health because anytime we're getting any kind of tumors an overreactive histamine response and creating mouse cell tumors any kind of tumors in general we want to be making sure that the that the microbiome is balanced and and the postbiotic effect of the pre and probiotics that you're using are immune modulation. So make sure that you're using a probiotic that has been researched to create an immune modulating effect from a postbiotic perspective. Um, our, our immune modulating st- probiotics are, is the wolf probiotic uh, phytos flora, Felix flora, um, and, um, larch has a, has an immune modulation effect as well. So the, all of our, all of our pre and probiotics have an immune modulation effect. So that's a really important one. And also I would say, you know, looking at her diet and making sure that you're not using high histamine foods, um, things like peppers, uh, anything that, that creates a higher, higher histamine reaction, I would try to stay away from, um, 
I don't know whether it's just the mast cell tumors or you notice like watch watch when you feed your dog if if she gets like after she eats even if she's not itchy but after she eats if her eyes are red or he if her eye if the whites of her eyes are redder or her the mucous membranes in her eyes are redder or her gums get redder or her mouth gets redder make start making a log of of what um what she's eating every day so if she's eating buffalo one day and turkey the next day or rabbit or whatever and keep a, pay attention to see if she's having a inflammatory reaction on any way shape or form or even with her poops as her poops get softer on certain things if the answer is yes on any particular proteins i'd remove those proteins from her diet for a little bit and see if that 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 spike in inflammatory reaction it, uh, alleviates so d lots of liver liver support um making sure that she's got really good probiotics that have an immune modulating effect and watching to see if she has an inflammatory reaction when she eats. Thanks. And uh, Sadie has a question. I have a 10 year old spade female dog with IBD and lymph. Oh my God. Big word. <laughs> Lymphagiectasia. She's, yeah, on low, she's in uh, on low fat, holy food, homemade diet, and I supplement with L glutamine, soy and C, and phytose energy at the moment. She also had liver tonic before. How do I make sure she gets essential fatty acids when she can't really have any oil supplements? I have looked into the turkey tail potency gut seal protocol. ECB's protocol, the wolf, what should I choose and how to rotate it, rotate the supplements? She is on a low dose of prednisone. Prednisone, probably. Prednisone, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, um, Sarah, I would, you know, seeing, seeing that, um, what you're doing, what you're doing is really good. Phytosynergy is, is a really good thing to be on when she's, if you, if she can't be on any kind of fat at all, you could try, you could try the potency and see if, because it's not an animal fat, right? It might, it might, it might be okay, but I would start her off like on a minuscule dose, like just a couple of drops and and see how she reacts but the the thing with the ibd is um i see that you have her on l-glutamine i would definitely be putting her on gut sooth a million trillion percent because of the n-acetylglucosamine so what what you really want to focus on is healing the junctions of the gut reducing the trauma of the mucosal lining and trying to create that a smoothness and and bring down the inflammatory response of the of the mucosal lining or the interstitial lining of the gut the one of the best ways of doing that is with n-acetylglucosamine in combination with slippery elm um marshmallow root dgl all the stuff that's in gut sooth so I would be definitely putting her on gut sooth before I would even try potency. I would I would get her on definitely get her on gut sooth and I would put her on um once a day for maybe 2 weeks I would put her on our go to and then I would make sure I wouldn't take her off of of off of liver tonic. I would leave her on a, on liver tonic. That's what I would do you've got gut seal protocol i don't know whether you're talking about when you say gut seal protocol i think you're talking about leaky gut protocol that would i wouldn't do leaky gut protocol only because i don't think with her symptoms that she might she might not be able to handle right away the 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 um digestive enzymes but i would buy gut seal which is the homeopathic remedy, I would buy 
gut soothe, liver tonic, and the go to. And give or go, but and make sure when you start these things that you keep a journal. So I don't know how you monitor her, her IBD, whether it's through her symptoms or whether it's through her stool or whether it's through gulping. I don't, I don't know what, how she presents, but um, those would be exactly what I would do. And I would contact Andrea Ring. Um, we can, someone can put it in the chat, her, her, um, her, her contact, because when I look at this, that's just sort of screaming to me, a homeopathic remedy called carcinosin, but she would probably, it'd probably be really good for her to take your dog's case and recommend a constitutional remedy. Thanks, Julie. Um, Susie asking again, have you heard of uh, leaving one ovary intact in an OSS spay? And do you recommend vasectomies for males? I have, and I, and I feel like, um, you know, I can't really speak to that super clear other than because I haven't seen hundreds of them or thousands of them. I have seen one and I've also seen, you know, I know it's a bit different with crypt orchids where, where there's one retained testicle, but I, I think by leaving one in, this is just a personal opinion and a sort of an instinctual feeling you're playing with fire because the body knows how to produce the hormones with two. And I think by only having one, I think you're going to create a hormone imbalance. I don't, I don't think that wouldn't be something that I would do saying that I can't, I can't honestly say that I'm, that I've seen thousands of cases of it. I've seen lots and lots of cases of ovary sparing spays for sure um, with great success, but not by just leaving um, one I, I I don't know. I don't know about that. I can't honestly say. Um, the, the, um, yeah, I think it would imbalance them. And do I recommend vasectomies? I have had lots and lots and lots of patients have vasectomies and it depends on the owners because they produce the same hormones. They smell the same as, as, unneutered males and I have an unneutered male dog and it it's a challenge it's a huge challenge it's a challenge for you it's a challenge for them um sometimes they get attacked by other dogs just because they smell different uh some they have a they can be it's a it's a bit of a again I don't like seeing things sexually repressed. I, I, I was one of the very first clinics out there to really support, um, not neutering animals, but by not neutering them or not spaying them or not neutering males requires more work on, on the owner in order to be, or on the pet parent to, to be sure that your animals aren't in, um, really a frustrated space you know, like really not in this, this space where they really want to have sex and can't. Um, my recommendation all the time, or all our, all the vets at my clinic and everything we recommended, like I said, depending on, you can't just take them and go, okay, you know, you're sexually still wanting to go breed that dog. So we're just going to lock you in the backyard or we're just going to train you to listen to us. We really have to sit back as things evolve, right? So I, I, I was under, I was one of those people like we shouldn't spay them. We shouldn't neuter them. We shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do that. And I didn't with my dogs and I ran into a lot of problems with doing that. And I had a vet hospital. I was, I was able to navigate that quite quickly, but it's, it is, it's a, it's a lot of work. And I think even the, the work perspective is one thing, 
but is, are you, is it fair to the animals? Like, are you really going to be able to be conscious to help them not be so frustrated? So that's one. Um, the other thing is uh, just if you decide to spay or neuter your animals, just make sure that they're mature. That's the, that's the biggest thing is making sure that they are, you know, with the bolt with males at least over a year old um with females for sure after their after their first heat the jury's out whether it should, should be from a cancer perspective it can be after their first heat before their second um but you know you you run the risk of that frustration and pyometra and stuff so it really is such a it's such a personal such a personal thing Thanks, Julie. And when you do spay and neuter, Andrea Ring's name is up there. We used to sell, Adored Beast used to sell a product called Spay and Neuter Protocol. And I use that at my practice with every single animal we spayed and neutered or any animal that came in that was spayed and neutered. We put them on a spay and neuter protocol, which is a homeopathic remedy. Um, you know, it, it, it didn't have to be a dog or or it could be a dog or a cat, but they were individual and they're made from, for the females, they're made from canine ovaries and feline ovaries, depending on what species you're giving them to. And then the males are made from canine test testicles or feline testicles. And it's a homeopathic preparation. And it's very cool because it's still the original preparation, which is probably 110 years old so the 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 remedy that it was made from it's not like they have to keep using testicles they would have used a testicle from way back or an ovary from way back way way before cancer was rampant in in animals so you're getting hormones from from an animal from a long long time ago which is which is pretty cool anyways we weren't allowed to sell it anymore um, the FDA stopped us from selling it and so did Health Canada, but <clears throat> homeopaths can still prescribe it. So Andrea Ring has it and she can, she can definitely prescribe it. Amazing. Thank you. Um, Beth is saying that she has a 13 older, uh, 13 years old, a border to here um, with liver issues and being using liver tonic. Uh, green juju, and she's having major dental surgery. Um, approximately, approximately thirty teeth. What can I give her for pain management and after anesthesia, please? Um, yeah. Oi. <laughs> she's gonna be in a lot of pain. I mean, if they're taking out thirty teeth in an animal that has liver issues, I'm going to say she's going to be in a lot of pain, but she's probably in a lot of pain now if they're taking them out. She's probably got a lot of dental pain. If if they're in a position where they're going to take out all those teeth and that old of a dog with liver issues, she might not even be in that much pain. Like she might, she might be relieved to get them out of her mouth. But um, and it's great that a dental specialist is doing it. That's really awesome. I'm very happy to hear that. But arnica, aconite, hypericum, symphytum, probably the best thing to do is to, would be to buy, and I say this all the time, and I use it in my own farm all the time, is our jump for joints is really good for dental, for dental surgery because it's got symphytum for bone pain, ruta for all of the ligaments in the teeth, um, arnica, and it, it's uh it's really really good for 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 gum gum and tooth and jaw pain and all of that the other remedies i would add though to it is is something called hypericum so if you can go and get a 200c hypericum and give her the jump for joints and that would be great and then the other remedy that would be really good for her to help her detoxify her her liver detoxify is phosphorus. And then you can just go get a 30 C phosphorus at any health food store and you can give, make it into a liquid, into some water 
and you can you can give her that for maybe you know once or twice a day for three to five days after just to just to help with helping to clear it the other thing if you really really want to dig into this is just contact andrea because she she can she will be able to give you specifics and i don't know where you live but she could she could give you higher doses than what i'm talking about and you know she could really be specific if you if you contact her and really really um um tell her exactly what's going on with her teeth so whitney welsh said she used arnica 1m when her girl had her teeth pulled so that's in the jump for joints um so that's why i was recommending jump for joints because it it's really good for the bone the actual bone pain not just the tooth pain um and like i said it's got really high potency arnica in it i would definitely at the minimum do that. Make sure that you're doing the liver tonic, doing the liver tonic. And the only thing that might be different would be hypericum for pain and um, uh, phosphorus to help her, her liver detox, detoxify from the, from the anesthetic. Amazing. Thank you. Andrea is asking, one of our dogs had a sarcoma removed from his right front leg. Margins were good. No other treatment is recommended at this point. Would uh, would the turkey tail supplement be advised for cancer support or anything else? Yeah, hundred percent. So I mean, this is this is how guys. This is how I look at cancer, and I worked with thousands of cases of cancer. And then I'm doing cancer research at Dalhousie for dogs, and um. I kind of don't look at cancer any differently than I look at disease. And when you remove a tumor, it's, it's great. And sometimes they definitely have to be removed, but you're removing the tumor, but you're not removing why the tumor got there. So when they said that there's no other treatment recommended, I'm not, I'm not going to go against that. But I'm going to say that then you're not addressing the reason that the cancer was there in the first place or the tumor is there in the first place. So would I be recommending anything post-surgery for your dog? Yeah. I mean, turkey tail, tons of gut support, like I said, when the gut is unhealthy and the and it's not balanced is when when stuff starts going sideways and you know cancer is when the cells don't die correctly it's one of the things about cancer so something triggers the body to not that it doesn't do that anymore so making sure that the gut is orchestrating all the systems of the body to be sure that they're working optimally because that's what our gut does we vote we we hear about the gut brain access but there's the it's the gut it's the gut everything access it's the gut kidney access it's the gut heart access it's the gut brain access it's the gut the gut the gut is the conductor for the symphony of all of our others all the symptom systems of our bodies so i always go back to the gut but then I'm also also going, what helps? So your your gut's taking care of making sure that it's harmonizing everything and the postbiotic effects is doing what it's doing and the body's converting the vitamins into the way that they should and you know short chain fatty acids, the list goes on and on. So make sure that you're doing that. But then also make sure that you're looking at antioxidants, right? So phytosynergy, liver tonic, turkey tail. If this was my dog, I would I would rotate all of them. I would have a dog that has sarcoma taken off. I would be on the proper probiotics and prebiotics always like as if it was food. And then I would be rotating all of the other amazing things that support the body to stay in homeostasis, which is what you want, 
with with cancer, um, like turkey tail, like phytosynergy, like liver tonic, and and like and like potency and rotating them. So you could go one bottle of turkey to make it super simple, not expensive, but stay on it. Don't ignore it and pretend it's gone. And I'm not trying to worry you because because this is a really that's really good that they got all the margins and everything. But I would be, you know, uh, doing the probiotics every day. Go through a bottle of turkey tail, go through a bottle of finish that, go through a bottle of phytosynergy, finish that, go through a bottle of liver tonic, finish that, go back to turkey tail and just keep rotating, rotating them through. It's really easy. It's not expensive. You don't have to, it's not a lot of thought behind it. And then, you know, then you can kind of like relax in knowing that you, that you're, you're paying attention to it all. Thanks, Julie. Okay. Ashley um, is asking, could my dog have a sensi sensitivity to the wolf probiotics? Anything's possible, 100%. I would really like to know what that might look like so I could maybe answer it a bit more specifically. Um, uh, Ashley, are you still there? Um, Kaylin, hi, Lily. Uh, maybe, Ashley, if you could put in the chat why you think that there's a sensitivity so that I can try and um um a, like be more specific about it and help you out a little more about it any dog any person can be sensitive to anything you could have the safest most amazing product on the planet and definitely something could could be sensitive to it okay she's biting and chewing all over herself did she do that before you started like what it, what was the reason that you started the wolf probiotic maybe you can put that in too of why you started like what was she biting and chewing before has she ever had allergies does she have any kind of yeast issue because sometimes starting a really, really potent probiotic can push yeast to die faster. And then you can get something like a Herx reaction where the, the yeast is dying too quickly and it looks like their itchiness is getting worse. So that can happen with any probiotic, but it would be really great, Ashley, to know why you started her and if she was biting and chewing all over before. And, and so the question is, yes, a dog could have any sensitivity to any supplement in the world. Um, number two is if you could write in if she, if she was itching before and number three is stop it, stop it. Oh, she had IBD and having anger issues with her brother. The biting and chewing started after. Okay. Hopefully you can text me back right away. Is there any change in her anger issues or her IBD? Hopefully you're going to put that in. For those people out there watching this and wondering why in the world I'm asking her that is because the skin is the largest organ in the body but it's the least life-threatening organ. Sometimes what can happen is the more serious diseases can go away. And as that's pushing the disease out of the body, like IBD, let's say, as the IBD is shifting, if you see Christina, is the skin detoxing? That's what Christina's, yes but you the skin would only only be detoxing if the other things are getting better so if there's not oh ibd is good now and anger has gotten better okay that's exactly what i mean so if she's biting and chewing but her ibd is good now and her anger is 
getting better. Those two things are really um, limiting in in their lives. Uh, so my answer to you would be to to stop the wolf. I don't know how long. Can you tell me how long she was on it for? Stop the wolf for two weeks. See if her itching reduces. Her itching and scratching reduces. But her IBD and her anger issues. Um, I think she's been on it for two or three weeks now. Okay. So... So I'm so tempted to say, stay on it for like another week and see if it starts to resolve. But if she's insanely itching to the point where she's going to start chewing holes in herself, that's going to make her bitchy too. That's going to make her angry as well. So it's a, it's a hard call. There's, there's a part of me that feels like you should be stopping the wolf for two weeks see how she see what happens and if she continues to improve with her IBD and her mental state and then maybe she's going to be one of those dogs where you're going to have to you put her on it you, you're pulsing it on one week off two weeks on one week off two weeks on one so you maintain the integrity of the probiotic so that the gut brain access was working together on her anger and, and it's helping her IBD, but it's not pushing it out so quickly or balancing it too quickly where she start where she's detoxing, because I don't want her to slide into a anger because she's just so irritated because she's so itchy. I sure hope that that makes sense. Wait a minute. Where's the where where is she talking about? Why is this thing? When did you change the food to beef? Where did she do that? Because she said earlier, I changed it. Her... Change your protein to beef, yeah. which is new. Ah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll bet you anything it's the beef. I didn't even see that come in until Tracy said it could whatever. Um so when did you change to the beef? It could definitely be the beef making her itchy. So maybe before taking her off wolf, could you put her on something like buffalo or venison or she stopped eating white fish? Um, is there a different type of white fish or fish that she could go on? That's what I would definitely do first. And if you didn't, um, if you didn't, if you don't see a change, then, then I changed to the duck. duck now. So, okay. So Ashley, be careful because you've put her on two things that are very, very, um, I mean, a duck isn't that I'm just thinking of my dog, uh, turkey, duck, or pork. I would do pork to be honest. That's what I would do that Kim put in turkey, duck, or pork. Mm -hmm. I would stay away from poultry altogether if she's reacting to beef. Maybe stay away from venison because it is more in that species and go straight to pork. And leave, put her on pork, leave her on the, on the, on the wolf strain. And then see if, if there's a change. If there's no change, take her off the wolf for two weeks and and then go from there okay so donnelly is um saying that my her 10 year old main coon cat has Man -coon. yeah uh eosinophilic yeah and he has been on prejudice alone for years 20 mg eod and he eats raw homemade food he's on um our omegas and turkey tail try it she tried our gut smooth uh yeah. gut sooth, uh, but got terrible diarrhea some as liver tonic is there anything else i can do for him i don't have a holistic vet vet 
He grew lumps on his tongue and throat. Uh, laser surgery finally got rid of them. Yet sores on lips went off the steroids. Okay. Um... So he's not getting diarrhea. Doesn't look like he's getting diarrhea when he's on turkey tail or omega. Right? Yeah. I so think then, just after gut sooth and liver tonic. After gut sooth. Uh, after gut sooth and liver tonic. That's yeah. so interesting. Donnelly, are you still here? Can you put in the, the chat whether you put him on gut sooth and liver tonic at the same time? And um, so, uh, la, 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 same as the liver. You could try, you could try the um, Felix Flora just to try and, you know, with eosinic granuloma, we want to do the same thing. We want to modulate the immune system. I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea why the gut sooth would bother him nor the liver tonic. Um, I would love to know though, if they were on it at the same time, because the only thing, oh, and I also, he eats raw homemade food. I don't know. Honestly, I don't, I don't know, but I would try with, with this kitty, two different things. I would try and, and don't forget everyone out there. If your cat or dog is reacting negatively to something, you can send it back, right? For a full refund. So if you if you are on gut sooth and the the liver tonic and your your cat can't have one of them, it would be really great though to know which one which one did what. You know, was it the two of them combined? Was it one? Was it the other? That would be something that I would like to know. Um, but if you're scared to try them on I'm on either one. Liver tonic would be amazing if he's been on um, prednisolone for such a long time to to support the your kitty's liver. You could try putting him on turkey tail. I mean, pr try putting him on liver tonic again, but don't use the gut sooth unless you've done that already and he gets diarrhea. Then don't just send it back. But the the Felix Flora would be really great to try, and so would Phytosynergy. So, but don't, whatever you do, don't do them together. Do, do one, see if your cat reacts positive or negative. And then the next one, it's for animals that are, um, the gut tooth will cause a reaction due to the beef liver glandular. That's, you're right. That's why I was asking when she said he eats raw homemade food. Um, I was going to say, is there beef in it? Because that would be the only thing. But that wouldn't make sense why the why the liver tonic would bother him because there's there's no animal protein in the liver tonic, so it would be really helpful to know if she tried them at different different times, um, and and for sure that I mean that is that is a that is problematic. I mean that could be could be why if 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 he's highly allergic to beef, um, I don't know. Uh, you could just send them both back and try Felix Flora and try the, um, or just try Phytosynergy first. Anything to help with the immune modulation is, 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 uh, is great. And Turkey Tail definitely does that. Amazing. Amanda is saying here, my former cancer research beagle has been developing new symptoms rapidly since April. I have been to a few different vets, including integrative, and have been politely told that I am paranoid by one of them. The latest symptom is mouth sores. Recent blood work shows keratocytes and microcytosis. Iron, pa iron panel shows no iron deficiency. I have an appointment with uh, internal medicine on the 21st. How can I make sure the most effective testing is done immediately to ensure a prompt diagnosis? 
He's only seven and we really want to save him. So, um, I love beagles so much. It's ridiculous. I, my sister had a actual Boston Terrier that they used, which is very odd. Um, usually they only use research beagles, but she had a research Boston Terrier. And I just want to tell Amanda, don't let anyone tell you that you're, you're, you're paranoid because this dog had the craziest symptoms that I, you could possibly imagine. And we did every single solitary type of test on him known to man. Um, that wasn't too invasive because he'd already been used as a lab rat. Uh, and nothing was confirmatory, but I mean, I lived next door to my sister and I know what this dog went through and I was her vet clinic. So clearly saw all of the different crazy, crazy things that this dog had from chronic projectile vomiting to seizure like symptoms to whatever. And I think that, um, uh, I think that the, the, oh, just what they go through in general as, as research animals is enough to put them over the edge to, with their whole system out of, out of whack, um, let alone what they're, what they're giving them. So as, I don't know, this is a really, really, really hard call, Amanda, because I feel like your dog has gone through so much lab stuff being a test animal that you're going to have to be very careful not to turn him back into that. Right. And, and the first thing that I look at with that, with that, with those results, with no iron deficiency is that there's something wrong with his absorption. There's something going on that, that the, that the, that the, the body isn't converting his food properly. So the first thing that I would do with this dog make sure that that everything that you're putting into him is de is detoxifying but not too not too heavy duty detoxifying and and modulating bringing his his entire reactive process in his body back to normal because it would have been up with with the research and then back down and then up with the research like his his immune his his reactive immune state is going to be so incredibly confused he's going to have a very confused immune system and by just doing a lot more extra tests is not necessarily um going to give you the answers that you're looking for and if he was my dog, I sure wouldn't be like doing a ton of like biopsies in every one of his organs to find out what's going on. Cause that's going to be, that's going to create a more reactive, um, another more reactive process of, of, um, you know, of, of being able trying to heal and, and the trauma of the biopsies and spreading things and, and all of that stuff. So my, my, my answer, my long answer to this, don't do anything until you have asked every single solitary question of what's the test, how invasive is it, and what, what will you find from the test and can you cure it? Because you might be able to, um, like, you might be able to get a diagnosis through a lot of invasive procedures, but there might be no treatment for it. 
So I'm not saying don't do it, what to do. I'm not saying any of that. Believe me, I'm, it, this is, this is your own call and your own journey with, with, with your, with your dog. But I would ask a whole bunch of questions and really write down all of the answers and then weigh the pros and the cons of doing the tests. And in the meantime, do every single solitary thing you can possibly do known to man to bring his body back into homeostasis because it definitely won't be after what he's, what he's been through. And I've been around a lot of these animals. What they need the most is some stability. They need, they need their cortisol levels to regulate because the entire time they're in the lab and in that research project, their cortisol levels are through the roof. And I think that is one of the most important things to regulate is, is that make sure that he's getting amazing whole food that his body can, can, can start to heal and detoxify on his own. Make sure that you're regulating his gut health, tons of liver, liver support so that the body can actually rid itself of the drugs and stuff that he was on and being tested for. And then there's really good homeopathic remedies like phosphorus and nux vomica that, that very, very, very gently help to help the body to, to detoxify. The other thing that's really good for detoxification is, um, um, oh, um, fulvic and fulvic and humic acid as, as almost, almost like a semi chelation they they look at it almost to help to to draw out heavy metals. So I would be doing all of that and then just really, really ask about what is it, how invasive is it, what's it gonna show, and can you cure it? I wouldn't even say treat it. I would be like, can you cure this? Is this curable? Thanks, Julie. Rebecca here is saying that. My sister's five and a half month field lab has some white hair on her pink belly. Mom or dad was a blonde. Sister wondering if autoimmune or puberty um, is happening. If any, if an issue she wants to address early. My sister's five and a half month field lab has some white hair on her pink belly. Mom or dad was blonde sister is wondering if, if autoimmune or puberty my sis first time female mom has two lab males 113 when passed and one closer to 15 when passed. if an issue she wants to address it early i have seen white hairs on bellies of many animals lots of dogs I, 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 I don't know, but that's my answer. I don't, I don't know if that would be an issue or, or not. Um, if the, if the animal comes from a healthy, healthy breeding stock and she's acting healthy and I don't, I had some hair on, has some hair. Has she always had the hair? Or has it just come out? Mm, I, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, for, again, um, it never hurts. Five and, a, five and a half months. That's young. I've seen, I have seen, I have seen cut, like white hairs on, on babies. Like on young, young puppies before. But I don't know if it's something to be worried about. I wouldn't think so, but I don't know. I honestly don't know. You'd have to, you would have to maybe ask your, ask a vet or, ask, you know, what I would do is I would maybe try to find a vet that's, that is um maybe a reproductive vet, a lab, like a, for, for labs, like a reproductive lab vet, um like lab, the breed Labrador and, and ask if it's a common thing. Because I, I know that I've seen it on, on puppies before where they have white, white, 
little white hairs coming from their belly and it hasn't been it hasn't shown as anything um negative right um kim um is asking hi 12 year old cat has stage two kidney failure no symptoms except for excessing pain has been previously on liver tonic just started again on felix flora just started health gut not the the hydrate urine shows red bc but no white there is no infection no symptoms stage two kill me. okay so then it's all you know for me when i read that it's all being proactive 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 not sure what your kidney's eating but if they're eating dry food i would slowly 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 take them off of dry food and have them only on raw food and canned food yeah it's, or uh, he's on raw he's, he's on it, raw yeah oh right there raw okay good awesome um that's great uh liver tonic i would leave him on liver tonic and ho really good homeopathic remedies for that is um uh oh uh what might be helpful what else might be helpful is using um uh not every day but maybe once or twice a week is phytosynergy could be could be very helpful and also potency so with so that you're getting omegas into him and the homeopathic remedy phosphorus and the homeopathic homeopathic remedy in really low doses of berberus and i'm going to mention um uh andrea ring again she she makes a really good um kidney combination kidney remedy an excellent one that we used to use at my clinic and she sells it in the meantime the liver tonic and making sure that she stays on raw continuing to monitor her urine um the fact that there's red blood cells in there i don't know i would i would be tempted to put her on homeopathic berberus and um make sure she stays hydrated and watch her uh you know watch her values and wait until you know don't wait too long but make sure that um you're monitoring her and if it starts to get worse i really love sub q fluids like i know animals that have been diagnosed with renal disease when they're 12 and they live until they're 17 and they have fairly regular subcutaneous fluids and you you can just ask your vet how to use it at home um i don't think she needs it yet but when that comes the time where she where, where it is progressing or if it does progress definitely so stay on the liver tonic go on um you know what you could do as I'm reading this, you could go on, especially with the red blood cells in her urine, I put her on the um, easy peasy protocol because there's berberus in it, in the, in the homeopathic. And it's so supportive for the bladder, you know, even though it's, this is probably kidney related. It's just, it's just a really good all around um, urinary tract. Uh, support and you could you know put her on one protocol three months later you could put her on it again or six months later you could put when she's finished put her on it again monitor her her levels and if you want uh, reach out to Andrea and put her on the her kidney homeopathic protocol which has all kinds of amazing remedies and low potency and as a as a prevention as a as a to try to slow things down who is um is asking gordy my border colleague golden got a tick in his head i believe he got uh got it at the cottage four hours north of stoville stoville 
I used a tick remover and twisted it off. I took tick, I took the tick to the vet to ask if it was the type that causes Lyme. She said all ticks can issues, which wasn't my question. He said he needs blood tests in six weeks. What can I do proactively? There's two questions, so I'm reading the first one and the second one. Okay. So Stovell, hi, Susie from Stovell. <laughs> um, I think everyone knows I grew up in Stovell. So lead them, homeopathic lead them. So my, my um, philosophy about ticks and I had Lyme disease, so I'm, it's very near and dear to my heart. I have worked with it for, I don't know, six years, I guess now. Um, I have researched it out the yin yang. Um, I've treated animal. I've worked with animals with it. I've worked with lots of people with it. And the number one thing for me is, is you'll always hear me talk about modulating the immune system. If you're worried about Lyme, you have to increase it, their immune system. You have to really boast, bolster the immune system and strengthen the immune system. So gut health, all different kinds of probiotics, as many different kinds of pre and probiotics as you can put into them to get the most diverse immune response. Um, phytosynergy, because it's got massive amounts of, I take phytosynergy three times a day, no matter what, unless I forget. And then I forget, but in general, I take it three times a day. Um, and uh, colloidal silver is good. Um, but the right, like our colloidal silver, I, should, I, I don't usually say that, but I am going to say it this time because it doesn't kill uh, friendly bacteria and a homeopathic remedy called Ledum, L E D U M. And you can get 30 C or 200 C and give it once a day for a week. And it's just um, um, proactive is to really, really, really boost their immune system, really make sure that their immune system is as strong as it possibly gets. So raw food diet, um, omega-3s, so like our potency, phytosynergy, pre and probiotics. Uh, liver tonic is really good too because it helps to remove the toxins that um, that the ticks can are created with the, the tick-borne virus. So that's what I would be doing. And, you know, she said all ticks can have issues. And the reason that she's saying that is because there's so many things other than Lyme, right? There's there's all different cofactors of, of tick-borne illness. But it doesn't mean that your dog's going to have symptoms. And the only thing that I don't like about that and this is something because I just know from humans is that she said he needs to have blood tests in six weeks. In six weeks, the virus will have, have really taken hold. So if people are concerned about tick-borne viruses, the doxycycline should be given really early and really fast. So like in a very short period of time. And I would never tell someone not to do doxycycline or not to worry about Lyme disease because it's, it's prevalent for sure. in people and in dogs and cats, but, um, I know a lot, a lot of dogs and cats and horses that get ticks all the time and they don't get Lyme disease. So, you know, I'm not, I just, I'm just trying to keep you calm and not get, not for you not to get scared. There's lots and lots and lots of animals that get bit by ticks and they don't get Lyme disease. The same with people. So I got it because I, my immune system was really low. Like I was, it, my immune system was, I was really, 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 really stressed. 
I had just moved out here from Vancouver and um, 10 day trip with a thousand animals that were all stressed out and old and compromised and everything. And then I got out here and the love of my life horse within three months was diagnosed with equine protozoal mild encephalitis, which is not curable. And I was just in such a bad place in my life. And I got bit by a tick and I got Lyme. But that's because I, was, I wasn't I was eating well. I wasn't sleeping. I was constantly on the computer all night long trying to figure out how to save my horse. Um, uh, and I was misdiagnosed. I was, I was told I was depressed and I should go on antidepressants and anti-anxiety. And I kept saying, I think I have Lyme. I think I have Lyme. I think I have Lyme. So it went a really long time and I never took any antibiotics because they wouldn't give them to me. And they actually wouldn't even test me for it. And um, Karen Becker and I were talking and she said, go get these tests done at your naturopath. And I did. And I had three different cofactors and I had it really, really bad. And I'm good. You know, I'm good. I never went on any antibiotics and I've just been doing all the things for specifically for Lyme and, and I'm, I'm good. So try not to worry. Thanks, Julie. So her second question here is the, the, her dog lost 10, 15 pounds of it this summer i switched to raw in february and he had free for all running at the cottage a lot this summer and fall lots of energy loves agility once a week i don't know maybe she'll lost he question to he lost 10 to 15 pounds this summer yeah is that what that means yes, yes. okay uh, I switched to raw in February and he had free run the cottage a lot of the summer, lots of energy, loves agility once a week. Is he skinny? Like 10 to 15 pounds is a lot. He must be a big dog. So is he a big dog and is he super skinny? And do you need to increase his food because he's running? Because that's the other thing, right? Like, if, if he's skinny, yes, however, his trainer says he's good. Well, whatever. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I will disagree. If you think he's skinny, he was 50 pounds. And that's not very big. And he lost 10 to 15 pounds. Okay. So my opinion is, you know him better than your trainer, a border collie. Animals that are too skinny are not healthy. No matter what you say, you want muscle. Sure, you can feel their ribs and sometimes you can feel some of their backbone and stuff, but you shouldn't be feeling his hip bones or pelvis. Um, he should have massive amounts of muscle. And if that's not the case, I would increase his food. He was really chunky. Okay, well, you know what? Like, if you feel like he's not skinny, you're his mom. You know him better than I do, but he, if he was 50 pounds and he's like 35 now, that's not a lot for a border collie. You know, uh, he's 40 now. Well, I don't know. Well, truthfully, I don't know. I, I feel like if he's acting like he's absolutely starving and he's lost that much weight, I'd probably increase his food just a tiny bit and maybe and maybe see, but that's that's a hard that's a hard question to answer because I the dog's not in front of me to go, I think he's too skinny. But if he's acting like he's starving to death, he's probably hungry and he's probably lost too much weight. And he's really, really active, so he probably needs a little bit more. That's what I would say. Thanks, Julie. Um Hi, y'all. Hi, Beverly. <laughs> Probiotic question. My dog, Anthony, gets gut soup and a bit of healthy gut daily. I have rotated in the wolf as well. I recently bought soy and tea, and uh, I'm curious how to either integrate that with the gut soup 
or to rotate it in instead of it. He does have a sensitive, a sensitive digestive system, and I find I find the gut suit is the best one of all for him to keep him regular. When I used the wolf, he was not as regular. I am reluctant to interrupt something that it's working. Thanks. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So <clears throat> gets gut soothe and healthy gut daily. I've rotated in the wolf as well. I recently bought soil and sea. I would give one day a week of the wolf see what he's like that week if ever oh it just disappeared hang on ah okay one day a week wolf leave him on the the gut sooth if he's doing well don't take him off if he's doing well the next week give him give him the soil and sea then the next week one day of wolf next week soil and sea you could do it that way and then you could increase it to twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. Or you could just do once a week or twice a week the wolf. When you run out of the wolf, switch to switch to soil and sea. And then do two days a week with soil and sea. And if you see a really, really big difference with either one of them on any level from emotional to digestive to just as happy as happiness in general, just make sure that you're, I always say, write a journal. You, it doesn't hurt when, if, when you're on gut sooth and you add soil and sea, or you all add the wolf strain, you are not repeat. You're not adding anything that's the same. You're adding two, you're adding, you're adding chlorella as a prebiotic, which is a functional prebiotic that has all kinds of incredible benefits with, with the dog, with immune system and the whole nine yards. And then you're adding a soil-based probiotic, which is not in gut sooth or healthy gut. If you're doing the wolf, you're actually giving him turkey tail which is as a prebiotic, which is a functional prebiotic that, that is highly beneficial outside of the gut. And then you're giving them the wolf strain, which is not in gut tooth. So you don't have to worry about overdoing it. You just have to be conscious of how your dog is reacting to it. And you don't have to give them all. So let's say, let's say gut tooth is great and you're putting them on wolf strain and it's amazing. Then you could do every other day on wolf on the wolf strain, or you could do one week on the wolf strain, one week off the wolf strain, and the same holds true for the for the soil and sea. He's asking if here. Not, don't be scared. In the chat, so would I also keep him on um, phytosynergy along with each of them? Yeah, phytosynergy is totally different. Yeah. Because of this, because of the tetrasod and superoxide dismutase in it. Okay, thank you. Kathy is asking Are there risks use, uh, with using CBD with dog uh, with one copy of MDR1 gene? The Washington U site, which has done most of the research, does not have much on CBD. I would send a question to for that. I would send a question to Angela. Someone needs to help me. Emily or and somebody. Angela, what's Angela's last name? Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure who you're talking about. Um, you know Angela with um CBD dog? Oh, yes, okay. So I would reach out to Angela or Ian. Thank okay. you, Whitney. Angela or Ian, um, oh, what's Ian's last name? Uh, with source CBD. Either either one. I would I would I would reach out to a CBD specialist. 
Okay, great. Lily um, is asking, just came from vet. The vet did culture on the ears, carrying terrier age 10. She had high liver enzymes in May and I did the liver detox. She has been liver tonic, healthy gut, phytoflora and jump for joint. My dog has yeast, both of her ears. The left ear has more yeast than the right. The vet gave me the keto hex flush uh, to use every other day. Her left keeps getting inflamed and she was scratching her left ear and, and shaking her head. The vet also thinks that she has a beef allergy. I used your our, <laughs> your go-to and Arnica to help with the pain. How can I get the inflammation down in the left ear? Any thoughts? Okay. Yeah, well, if she thinks that she has a beef allergy I would take her off of beef and we talked about pork being a good alternative um I would definitely do that the next thing that I would do is let me just look so she's been on liver tonic healthy gut phytoflora and jump for joints doesn't sound like you've put her on the yeasty beast protocol which is probably what I would do um I would probably do the yeasty beast protocol with her and ask your vet, make sure, make sure 1 billion percent that the, that the ear is intact, that there's no um, perforated eardrum. If there's no perforated eardrum, the product that I think is one of the most amazing products out there for yeasty ears is something called, um, oh my God, I just went brain dead. Oh my God. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's an enzyme for ear. Uh, Someone oh is saying. God. Guys, Zymox. Zymox. Thank you, Zymox. Susie. <laughs> yes, thank you. Zymox. Now you can, um, Zymox is, uh, um, is really, really good. I don't like, I don't personally like all of the products, but I like the ones in a little bottle and it's just the enzyme. It's not the cleaner. Um, I got it. Zymox and she didn't, I took my, why didn't she like it? It doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know why she didn't like it. I, I think it's brilliant. I think it's amazing. I think it's, I've seen, it's been a really um, incredible thing at my clinic. A lot of people, I've recommended it to friends that just go out and buy it on Amazon. And there's two different kinds. Like I said, I wouldn't use the cleanser. I would just do use the enzyme. That's it. The, the enzymatic, they're in little bottles. And there's one with cortisone. There's two with cortisone with different levels of cortisone. And there's one without. I always start with the one that is without. Um, uh, and if it if it doesn't work and you really, 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 really need a um, something to, to deal with it right away, you can use the one with, with hydrocortisone in, but use the one with the, the very, very least and make sure that you're doing everything possible underneath to to deal with the yeast, like the the yeasty beast protocol. Um, liver tonic is a massive one, but that's in the that's in the protocol, right? I think the liver tonic is in yeasty beast protocol, yeah. And diet, and um, it's just a it's things for pain, things that go to is really good. I'm glad an Arnica. The other thing for pain for yeasty ears is really good is Hepersulf, a homeopathic remedy called Hepersulf. It's really good for, for ear pain and, um, and especially from infection or yeast infections and for inflammation. Belladonna is a good one for ear. You know what you should do, Lily? Go on our go on our um, YouTube station, and there's one there's a thing that I do did called "Are You Vet Ready?" And in that, um, 
in that there's a there's a section where I talk about specific homeopathic remedies for for ear stuff and you can you can do that but right there where she said um uh where did it say it was Kaylin and then Christina oh everything's moving so fast Zymox has been a life changer completely cleared up a chronic yeast infection and yeasty beats yeah those are my two those are my two go-to things is Zyme for bad ears or Zymox and um, UCB's protocol. So we still have two questions, but I'm going to ask the final one, I guess, just because okay. of the time. And yeah. Katie is asking, my dog uh, has been experiencing a persistent infection in his penis. The vet prescribed OTIC 15G, which is neat clearing it up. Do you have any homeopathic remedy? We use many ABA products. Could this condition be related to allergy? Yeah. I mean, if if the dog is licking his penis or the sheath around his penis or scratching it because he's itchy, that can that can cause it. Um a cert certain bacteria can can cause it. So with that, oh God, it keeps moving. <laughs> um, okay, just let me think about this for one second. Persistent infection in his penis. Katie, can you write in there if you're still here, whether it affects his urine? Is there any kind of urine situation with it? Uh, maybe she's not there. I can see her among the attendees, so let's see. Okay, I don't, I don't know. Okay, so there's no, there's no, like, he's not peeing more often. Did the vet not do a urine, a urine sample? If you didn't have, if you haven't had a urine sample done, um, no. I would, I would, does he lick his penis a lot? Katie, some. Okay, so 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 it's almost like what came before the chicken or the egg. Sometimes if the if the if the urine is bothering the dog, like it's stinging or burning, or they've got crystals or um um anything like that, like any kind of infection, then they can they'll start licking their penis and then their sheath can get infected from the constant licking and inflammation. Um so I would, I would get a test done and it, it's good that it's a boy dog because if you take them to the vets and you get a sterile container and you catch a midstream, um, uh, a midstream catch and, and have the vet checked for, to make sure there's going to be inflammation there probably for sure. If he's got an infection in his penis, um, but it would be good to see if he's got something going on like crystals and that's why he's licking his penis so much. But I don't know what your, the other thing is, um, um, I don't know what his symptoms are or, or any, the vet, hold on. Whoa. The vet did look at, at the bacteria, which is why she gave him medication bacteria for the, I'm getting confused if this is a, bladder infection or an infection in his penis and they're very they're very different so i'm not too sure how to answer that without giving you the wrong wrong information um uh so if i don't know whether it's a bladder infection or a infection in his penis something's going on with him that he has an infection that isn't going away in order to try and get that to clear up. I, again, I would be dealing with his gut to be sure that he has the correct friendly bacteria that helps to deal with pathogenic bacteria. So I don't think, and can it be, if it, if it has that, if it's, if it's an actual infection in his penis, 
it, and it's the skin, then yes, you know, allergies can affect all, all areas, especially if they're over licking. So, um, you could do the leaky gut protocol, but I don't know whether, you know, it really, the leaky gut protocol may not, may not hurt because of the N-acetylglucosamine, because if he does have any kind of inflammation or infection in his urethra, um, that would be really helpful too. But you could, if you want, Katie, you could get a little more information and send it to customers. Oh, he's taking Wolf too. Okay, good. But, and send it to um, the customer service team and I can take a a bit of a look at it after as well, just to get a little bit more clear. Like they, you know, I, I would personally check his urine. I guess they could have just done a swab to see what kind of bacteria um, was in his penis. That's, that's probably what he did do, but you know, there's lots of different ways you can clean things like there's lots of nice, nice cleaning agents like, like our colloidal silver or um, a really, really, really dilute um, uh, always and oopsies, but really dilute and not the, not the UCBs, but the always and oopsies or calendula. Calendula is really good. I don't know. There's, there's a ton of stuff you could do if I, if I had a little bit more information um, but homeopathic remedies for infection are things like hydrastis, uh, which is golden seal, homeopathic golden seal, things like pepper sulf, um, silica. Those would be all the homeopathic remedies that I would be looking at. Um, even in even homeopathic calendula. So hydrastis, homeop and this I would do all of them in 30C. Hydrastis, pepper sulf, silica, and calendula uh, homeopathic would be four remedies that, that could be very helpful. Amazing. Thanks. Um, any final message for today? Me? Yeah. <laughs> well, I just always wish I had more time so I could answer everything. I think we've got to figure out how to do that because it's just... <laughs> so much more we, uh, we answered a lot today we cover a lot we did and, uh, but look how many yeah. there still is there 16 so still. many uh working with someone we're doing glandulars right now with a fair bit of causticum and pulsatil when needed also has a okay lauren i just want to tell you quickly um uh regarding controlling incontinence <clears throat> so the um incontinence i would reach out to andrea ring for the i don't know if this is a female or male incontinence whatever it is uh the the hormone the hormone protocol the spay and neuter protocol really great for incontinence a homeopathic remedy called phosphoric acid really great for incontinence um and then supporting the bladder so our easy peasy, um, our easy peasy protocol, along with uh, phosphoric acid, homeopathic, and um, uh, the spay and neuter. You did try on spayed female. You did try Andrea, but never got back. I tried. I tried Andrea, or she. I did try. Probably she means. Um, how long ago? Yes, continue with the easy peasy protocol. Reach out to Andrea again, please. And I'm going to text her tonight and say that you're going to reach out to her because the, 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 the spay, the canine spay protocol is really, really good. It really helps. So does phosphoric acid. So does easy peasy. So so does liver tonic because it supports the kidneys. So there's a bunch of stuff and it's, it is definitely possible to help, to help slow it down. Great. All right. Yeah. I think I'm gonna, 
finish this for today, guys. I'm yes. so sorry because it's just getting late. Uh, it is getting but, late. Yeah, but for the ones that we couldn't answer your questions, please, um, you can uh, join our community on Facebook, the Adore Beast Collective, and then you can post your question there and we'll be glad to help you. And uh, again, I would like to thank everyone that joined us today. And of course, you, Julie, for your time and uh, this amazing discussion. We covered a lot, as I said before. Um, and that's it. I wish you all a great night. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. You can uh, sign up on our website to get all the information about Adore Beast, our promos, new blog postings, and future Ask Julie anything sessions. And uh, thank you so much again, everyone. Stay safe, stay warm because the winter is. I know coming. it's coming. I'm like sitting here with a heating blanket it's on. It's coming me. again. And uh, have a good night. Oh. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye.